August 4, 1994, around the usual Moscow building, a crowd had gathered at home on Komsomolsky Prospect. The eyes of the people rushed up where they saw a going down of the ropes Omon soldier. Another soldier at this moment cuts a metal grinder, the door that the landlord flatly refused to open. An hour later, the excitement of the crowd in sea fires because from the entrance Omon take him out. An unremarkable man accompanied by policemen get into the car and drive away and the crowd starts scream hands off Mavrodi people desperately demand to let him go at the same time an indefined person took 17 trucks full of cash from MMM offices 20 years later 75% of the country inhabitants will be considering him as a shameless fraudster and his company MMM will become synonymous with decide and a symbol of dashing 90s along with crimson jackets bandits and the total poetry the mmm company every day advertised from television screens assuring that it has a no problem collapsed in one day at once leaving more than 10 million people without money the history of the joint stock company mmm is the history of the formation of the entire free market in russia without any rules and sane control the pinnacle of what can be achieved by an an unprincipled person and under weak legislation and total financial ignorance of citizen. While Sergei Mavrodi did not engage in commercial activities, he lived the ordinary life of a Soviet intellectual. Born in Moscow in 1955, graduated from the university speciality applied mathematics and after studying he even managed to work for two years as an engineer at a research institute. But it was clearly not the kind of life that the genius mathematician were thinking about. So in 1981 he retired from the institute and became an illegal entrepreneur and not to be attracted under the article for parasitism, which means person which didn't work, got a job at night watchman. Yes, imagine there were times when you could go to jail for not having a job. At that time many creative people were using such tricks. For example, Victor Tsoi, the most famous singer of those times in the USSR was list listed as a stalker and Yuri Shevchuk janitor but Mavrodi had a second risk his real activity was also not entirely legal he traded audio and video recordings yes for private businesses in those days it was also possible to get behind metal bars easily but Mavrodi quite successfully hide from the attentive police gaze he was arrested only once and then after 10 days he was released without charge his life changed dramatically with the beginning of the perestroika when Soviet power in an attempt to save the failing economy allowed so-called cooperatives something like of our small businesses but with a few important differences firstly a cooperative is a kind of a capitalism with the Soviet as a person the founder was forbidden to use hired labor all participants had to be at the same time leaders organizations and employee secondly for occupators as for class enemies USSR came up with a specially progressive taxation according to which entrepreneurs had to withdraw excess profits so that you understand the degree of absurdity beyond the income of power considered everything that is two and a half times higher than the average wages across the country nevertheless cooperatives began to grow and spread all over the soviet union Mavrodi himself did not stand aside in 1989 together with his brother and his wife he registered an organization under the same name mmm but it's still there was no financial pyramid, which Russian alt know so well. At first MMM was an ordinary commercial company and was engaged in the most profitable business at that time, trade import office equipment. Even in condition of a shortage of everything in general, the sale of computers and copier for anyone at that time could bring a fortune and when the US finally collapsed, already began to expand the company at an unprecedented pace. MMM opened its its own bank began to produce advertising, took up the part on the stock exchange and much more.
power. But still Mavrodia was not an ordinary businessman from the 90s. Then any company that wanted to grab a big piece of the market there was only one way to negotiate with the state. Most modern oligarchs are just like that. They and collected its first capital. But Mavrodia decided to go his own way. Probably his natural social party played a big role in it. He simply did not want to take into account anyone's interest, interest other than their own and most likely did not understand how it could help him or do harm. Therefore he decided that support should be sought not from the authorities but from the population. And for this it is necessary to create an Im image of a successful and reliable company that everyone knows. And since 1991 MMM launched an unprecedented advertising strategy. By the way, because of this advertisement many still think that MMM has been fooling people for a lot longer than that. Than that was in effect. Just because the company began to actively promote much earlier than his transformation into Pyramid, MMM posters covered the entire city. The film has sponsored several TV shows and music clips in September 1991 and even organized Day of Free Rides in Moscow Underground or Metro for other people. And it worked. MMM was one of the fastest growing company in Russia. By 1992, MMM already have 300 branches through country. But this happy happiness could not last long. The more the business grows, the more it uh, attracts the attention of the authorities. And at one fine moment, the tax office came to the MMM office along with the Omon. The company seized all financial documents, froze their accounts and naturally found signs of evasion from paying taxes. And in MMM banks in general were a huge financial hole. At the time of the check, there simply was not those money that the bank was supposed to be lending and depositing and even after numerous interactions the bank did not try pay off the debts and continued to issue new loans. So in May 1993 they decided to, revo to revoke his license altogether. This was a turning point for Mavrodi. If MMM at that time was engaged in ordinary business with ordinary at that time fraud, then after him the company stood up on the path that will lead her to the collapse of national hatred and massive lawsuits. The main problem of the tax audit for MMM was not even losing money herself, but the fact that the bank stopped issuing no loans. For any business this is almost a death sentence. It became a hard question of where to get funds for de development. And that's when Mavrodi decided decided to ask them from people, as investment of course. At the high point of the voucher privatization, a company is born MMM Invest and begins to massively buy these same vouchers, a little explanation is needed here. The state again started economic reform and decided to transfer state property to private hands and to do in the best tradition of revolutionary Soviet slogans, take everything and share. The property of the country was estimated at 1 trillion 400 billion rubles and exactly for this amounts uh, so-called vouchers. Each is, each is denominated as 10,000. Well, they began to distribute them to people so that they could go somewhere invested. A noble idea in practice turned into a complete marasmus. Not only was the financial literacy of citizens practically at zero, so also the vouchers were unchanged. Many simply did, know, did not know what to do with them and became an easy prey for more perspicuous figures. They actually bought this paper for next nothing and then received ownership of factories and companies. And the face value of 10,000 did not really reflect the real cost. Vouchers were bought and sold at absolutely random price depending on the company and even on the region. For example, in the Nizhny Novgorod region, for one voucher you can acquire 2,000 shares of Gazprom and today your fortune will be 4,500 bucks. Or you could buy 7 shares of the old central soviet supermarket and now your the state will be as much as six bucks in general nobody could not pass by this rivalry of whole life and also got party participant in it and this money was not enough for business development or and the growing appetites of Mavrodi himself so it remained to take just one step. As you can see appearance of the pyramid was not so sudden. It was preceded by a whole five year history. Successful company which by the way enjoyed huge
huge trust among the population thanks to advertisement literally from each corner of the streets. So before being surprised at the stupidity of BMMM depositors, scammers, but remember that they carried money to not smelly one-eyed scammers but quite reliable and respected by all firm. So from the 90s 40s year events began to develop swiftly. Mavrodi decides to remake MMM into a joint stock company and quite officially issues 991,000 shares. They go on sale February 1st. It is difficult to say at what exact moment Mavrodi realized to turn his company into a financial pyramid, but a week later he establishes the so called double quotes, introduce a forced increase in stock price in manually mode and under loud promises of a thousand of persons per annum. They began to spread as a hot pie. Maurodi even began to promote the slogan, today always more than yesterday. Here is the same starting point when MMM is finally and irrevocably returned in the financial pyramid. So what is a financial pyramid and in effect why is it bad? Well in short it's just a redistributory system money. The pyramid does not conduct any commercial activity, does not engage in investment, trade or production goods and the services, but for some reason it shares are growing fantastic pace. This is achieved thanks to the fact that in front of the old depository pay with new money. This means that the pyramid can only exist as long as there is a stable flow of money and it's always or more than it's actually have. It is for these two reasons that pyramids always collapse and are always unable to pay all deposits. Of course Mavrodi did not invent of such scheme by himself. This modern form it was created by the chart sponsor who is who at the beginning of the 20th century in America he deceived 17,000 people. Mavrodi just transferred the Ponzi scheme to the Russian reality and deceived more than 10 million people. Now let's see how it happens. So all MMM shares were sold out in the first month. Then the price was twice the face value and the box office don't write bursting with those who want to buy more. Because even those who are at first did not believe Mavrodi then still carried his savings to him. And how in the fact not to carry money in? After all, he really paid the interest that he promised. And this, by the way, is not surprising. Any pyramid at first pays everything regularly. Well, the, popula the popular image of Mavrodi in the meantime finally formed. He was perceived as nothing more than a financial genius. He was the only honest businessman who is ready a legend and a helping hand in these difficult times, while others in the 90s openly robbed the people. It seems that not only the native of people played in the hands of Mavrodi, but hyperinflation in the early 90s, the ruble flow down furiously pace. In 1992, inflation was 2 is a half of thousand percent, in 1993, 840%. Percent. People were looking for any opportunity to somehow save their savings, and the contributions to MMM seemed to fit the role perfectly. The very possibility of not only saving your money in these hard times, but the, to multiply them, it looks looked quite attractive. You had to be crazy to refuse money which is falling down in your actually from the sky. The third pillar of which the success of MMM rested is an unprecedented in terms of PR. MMM was the largest advertiser, advertiser in the country and on December 13, 31, 1993 on TV with a new year congratulations it was not the president of the Russia who turned it but the president of MMM. Even now this appeals means little to us and everyone looked at him with a fair amount of skepticism but then it means quite a lot to the citizens. Advertising was done not only one on grand scale but also with a precise calculation. Mavrodi understand perfectly well that this his target audience are hard workers who after the collapse of the USSR lost all guidelines for themselves. So you need to give them this guide guideline, give them such advertising so that they see themselves and their future and need happiness. And MMM launched a whole 43 episodes and series where a simple excavator operator Lenya Golubkov clearly showed how wonderful life is with MMM. You can buy boots, a fur coat for your wife, fly to America and build a house in the Paris there. And the phrase I'm not a freeloader, I'm a partner is still 
will not go out of the minds of older people. In general, trust in MMM was almost unlimited. But after some time, there was one small problem. MMM shares are over the people bought everything. By law, the company has already released the maximum possible zero number. For the first time, Avrodi did not re reinvent the wheel and just bypass this limitation. He just started a new firm called MMM Fund. And you should share already on her behalf, but they also ended literally in the month. Then Mavrodi refused to raise their attractive ideas to open another company and issue on its behalf shares. Also, the method would seem to be quite proven. Proven but uncomfortable. Still, a new company is an additional cost. Bureaucratic, delays and time. Yes, in effect, not the necessary attraction of attention from the side of the authorities. And then Mavrodi decided to really hack the system. Instead of new shares, he issued his own money. What do you mean your own money release? Well, not really. There are MMM tickets, like this, uh, this one, which a portrait of Mavrodi himself instead of Lenin. Yeah, the people call such piece of paper Mavrodiki. There are also watermarks and other protection methods. Yes, they were even printed on real machines for producing money, but legally they were just beautiful piece of paper. But you can do those as much as you like. Immediately after they were printed, Mavrodi states that 100 such MMM tickets are equal to one share of his company and immediately launched them for sale. By the way, the funny thing is that they are not even formally sold. The purchase looked like this. A person came to the branch MMM and asked to give him, for example, 50 tickets. The cashier checked the stock quotes, quotes and named the price. After why an agreement was drawn up with the client for a gratitude donation in favor of MMM, an amount that was equal to the cost tickets and the ticket itself was issued simply as a souvenir. Its sale was not recorded anywhere. Well, if a person wanted to change Mavrodiki to real money, then the transaction was carried out in the same way, just the opposite. So MMM gave money to the client back free of charge. In general, the scheme is rather muddy, but with a legal point of view you couldn't find fault. By July, the number of depositors was already counted in millions, and at least for professional financiers, are all about MMM was clear since the introduction of double race indication. But people from streets were not interested in such. The main thing is that money is paid, but as I said, financial pyramids, pyramids are not eternal. But in case with the Mavrodi company, the denouncement came even faster than he could have thought. Formerly, MMM existed right up to 1997, but in the fact it collapsed back in 1994, just six months after launch. They also brought shares in February and dumped them in June, increased their investment by 127 times. Do you believe in it? Oh boy. But as you understand, there were only only a few of them most lost their money in just one day. But where were the authorities at that moment? Why were they inactive? Police and prosecutors? What is their role? After all, Mavrodi made just such a grandiose scam, right in the front of everyone's eyes, not a bit hidden. Of course, MMM was watched by authorities, but it had nothing to show since Mavrodi came up with a legal idea scheme. At this time, there simply were no laws prohibiting financial pyramids. Looking ahead, I'll say that such a law was invented in Russia only in 2016 when Mavrodis tri tried several more times to review MMM. But it cannot be said that they did not at all try to resist him. The situation with MMM was discussed even at the government meetings. Mavrodi himself later claimed that he was repeatedly invited to the Kremlin for negotiations, but he always proudly refused. They also tried to counteract him with information. Officials of all high began to appear of televisions and warn, warn people against depositing MMM. But this also helped very little because people saw real money and saw their multiplication literally from scratch. This forged, fogged their eyes of even quite smart citizen. In the end, the authorities decided to act radically and try to catch Mavrodi at least for something. And he like two years ago was again accused of non-payment taxes for 50 billion rubles. Legally the case are arranged quite complicated. Money was transferred from one MMM structure
transfer to another and somewhere along the way some amount was lost and then the interest kicked in it may seem that for mmm 50 billion is rubles is quite an unbearable amount indeed at that time the amount was quite cosmic at such depth should have destroyed the company literally instantly but in the fact at that time mmm was earning 50 million dollars a day for one dollar then you could get 2600 rubles the exchange rate of 1994 he could get two such fines per day and pay them without straining at all Mavrodi really had a lot of money and an understanding this could really blow your head and Mavrodi apparently believing in his own exclusivity decided to enter into an open confrontation with the authorities and he miscalculated searches by police and the mmm's office provoke a panic people rushed to withdraw money at first mavrodi thought that he would be able to repay excitement so the payment did not stop but on july 27th he nevertheless recognized the collapse of the system and chosen exchange of money forever but but few people immediately realized that they had lost their money, which is why the arrest of Mavrodi caused such a violent protest. And I remind you that Mavrodi was perceived as a folk hero and benefactor who wholeheartedly helped the people of the streets. He is a honest, he even posted his portraits on official papers. Will the scammer do this and then imagine this saint being dragged to prison? The people do not think long, they understand that this saint must be saved. At first Mavrodi felt himself a quite confident, he had an excellent trump card in his hands. Because of the actions of the police and all the blame for the collapse of the MMM was blamed on them and the fraudster himself turned out to be innocent in the eyes of people as it were not his fault at first he tried to restart the pyramid in order to attract new investors and an announced a reduction in the share price in 127 times but he promised that they would grow four times faster than the previous one at the same time he threatened to make a referendum and submit two issues to a popular vote first get confidence out of government second securing the legal immunity of mmm as a backbone organization of russia just imagine a financial pyramid a system forming country organization such a daring speed in the face of statehood were not expected even in the kremlin itself but no matter how daring both of these declares were not they did not get succeed because in effect mavrodi had no real opportunity to make his streets come true but soon he found another and more elegant way get out. He announced his desire to run for a state politician. Politician. No election program Mavrodi naturally didn't have. He had only one asset, the trust of the investors of MMM. And if you are not forget, there was a 10 million people investing in MMM. And the population of Russia in that time was like 150 millions of people. So he had trust of a not the less as a 7% of the population of the Russia in that moment. And just one promise, choose me in the deputies, I will return the money and it damn well worked. He wins, get par parliamentary immunity and immediately goes free after serving behind bars for everything three months. But in a vain, people hope to get their money back. In the best tradition of most politicians, Mavrodi was in no hurry to fulfill campaign promises. In fact, he didn't gi give a damn about everyone on ordinary people and on his new fellow deputies. In general, it is quite amazing how in one person can get along with such an amazing flair of financial fraudster with such a astounding political illiteracy as a result initially having good popular support and the opportunity secure to secure goods connecting on the very top Mavrodi safely lose everything literally in a year however in MMA he tried to turn into a political strength and create a party of people capital but turned out to be so inept leaders that the shares of MMM supporter assembled some shameful panopticum party activists for worked for free just with ghostly hope to return their money. Moreover, he even managed to receive enough deposits from already deceived people. How did he do it? Very simple. Want to get your saving back? Pay more. Want to get 
get them back faster than the rest pay more it's clear that with this approach the number of supporters mmo fell catastrophically in the end in his party there were completely crazy freaks more like religious fanatics which finally buried the credibility of mmm but having lost population popular support mavrodi did not consider it necessary to make a useful acquaintance in power circles at the meeting of the duma he was only once this whole circus could not go on for a long time and one day the head of the mmm was simply deprived of a deputy mandat just somewhere someone during the meeting noticed that mavrodi gained absent from his workplace and by voting offered to relieve him of his post of his post at first everyone was very surprised that he became a deputy at all and then all anonym anonymously voted for by anonymous de decision throwing him out of the duma with a warning for continuing business and for mavrodi it became a surprise it seems that he paid attention only to legal rules and did not understand at all how interpersonal relations works he was sure that you can safely not to go to meetings because there was no rule against absentism but he was sure no commercial activity he was not legally involved because everything was formalized as if he runs mmm on a voluntary basis for free therefore i already believed that he did not violate anything he had at least four years of parliamentary immu immunity ahead of him and in the end again under investigation he was already only a year later then he tries to repeat his trick with election and get nominated presi presidential candidates but he was denied registration but the case with the acquisition for of fraud went on a full speed plus civil lawsuit from the victims the court officially accepts the claim of almost 2000 depositors in the amount of 82 million dollars for my it was a complete surprise was it worth it to deal with all these complex schemes come up with a gratitude and donation if mmm tickets began to be accepted as an evidence of a claim against him after all they were not even nominal and did not possess any legal force such tickets could easily be found and on streets and the first thing go and f go and file a lawsuit against mavrodi however he didn't he did just that mavrodi scattered several Several tons of these tickets through the streets so that anyone could pick them up and after that the court already refused to count the tickets sufficient reason to initiate proceeding but the circle for Marodi as they say narrowed in 1997 MMM was finally declared bankrupt Marodi went on the run and the pyramid gradually began forget like a bad dream in the thoughts of people from time to time there were reports in the media that the fugitive swindler was seen either in Greece or at the official dacha on Rublovka but all this remains rumors Mamem died but his work lived on seeing the huge success of the pyramids Russia had breed many such organizations Hopper Invest, Vlastilina, the Russian house of Selinga and more with a dozen others the MMM lesson was painful but not everyone would do it assimilate even after the official bankruptcy brother of Mavrodi managed to Use the pyramid and started collecting money again from the trusting people. And on the same pretext, return everything to everyone. In the end, it was Brother Mavrodi Vyacheslav who became the first person from this family to be imprisoned for fraud. By the way, it is like likely that it was uh, he who passed the locations of Sergei in exchange of a lighter sentence. It turned out that the famous pyramid builder hid in an ordinary Moscow apartment for six years and not just hiding but managing to create another pyramid virtual pseudo exchange stock generations the largest of the internet it affected 275,000 residents from the us and europe completely with any consequences for mavrodi himself because legally the pyramid was framed as a gambling game and if you're lost at the casino then as they say you lost at the casino no one dragged you by the wallet and nothing legally didn't promise but the past still over 
never took Mavrodi in 2003 he was behind the bars. Saying truthfully he did not spend a, si a single day in a real colony. The court hearing in his case lasted as many as 4 years and all this time he was si sitting in a pretrial deten detention center. And in 2007 he calmly listened to the verdict and also calmly went free. But in addition he also received civil lawsuits for as much as 300 million rubles while he didn't pay anything to anyone pretending to be a beggar and he continued to calmly deal with the new financial pyramid. First Mavrodi created MMM 2011 and openly called her pyramid and warns that you can invest in it only at your own risk. But people bring money, someone out of stupidity, someone with the expectation that they will be on time to go out. Well before the scope of the 90s the new version of MMM was already far away. The pyramid died peacefully a year later, but in this place Mavrodi immediately launched MMM 2012 and after a new crash, the international MMM Global was born, where money was accepted exclusively in bitcoins. Along the way Mavrodi wrote books, launched websites and in 2011 even the full-length film Pyramida was released, where the character Mavrodi was presented as the savior of Russia, home dumped oligarchs rooted. He also tried to engage in politics and if in in Russia his party were denied for registration, in Ukraine it did appear and even accepted participation election to the Verkhovna Rada. By the way, do you know who was the MMM candidate? Denis Pushilin. Yes, the one who is now the head of the DNR for the territory of which Ukraine and Russia are at war at now. And from 2011 to 2013 he was an active functionary of MMM in Ukraine. The financial fraud of Mavrodi at the time reached new level. Using imp imperfect legislation, he opened pyramids around the world, South Africa, Ghana, Peru, in total 20 countries. In Nigeria, the MMM website in 2016 entered the top 5 most visited surprised Facebook. Yes, Nigerian letters were on once a symbol of African fraud in Russia, and now Mavrodi showed Nigerians what a real scam looks like in Russia. In Nigeria, the Mavrodi pyramid collapsed at the end of 2016, leaving without money. 3 million people. Sergei Mavrodi died in 2018 until the end of his life counting to build continuing to build more and more pyramids and MMM forever went down in history as the most massive scam in Russia but literally probably not only in Russia look Nigeria America Europe Ukraine and a lot of countries but yeah the biggest in Russia <laughs> It's so freaking, it's killing my mind. In discovered just a colossal hole in the law which is darned to this day. Well, Mavrodi himself spoke modestly about himself. I'm not a genius. Genius is just one side of my personality. I am the messiah, I am changing the world. Mavrodi really was a kind of unique person. He was very smart and very stupid at the same time. <laughs> He took a simple as three pennies through the land scheme and brought it to the perfection. He perfectly know how to spoke in the ears of ordinary people and turned even repulsed conspiracy theorists into his supporters, who didn't trust the government or scientists or anyone else. But with all this, Marodi it seems did not understand how inner world of other work. He did not understand what is good and what is evil. The only thing that bothered him was the formal observance law. If the law are full of holes and a lot of outright descent, then it means the law are to blame, not the deceiver. It was a truly interesting character who managed to create largest scam in human history and full millions of people. Of course, he would not have been able to achieve this if not the most difficult trial that fell on to the lot of a huge number of people on post-Soviet countries. But it's still a valuable lesson, a lesson that once and for all talked people not to trust all sort of fairy tales about that in this life. You can live in a big way, not for this without doing it. People for the most part stopped believing in free cheese in a mousetrap. And I think it's good. The only bad thing is that it had to be learned by such a high price. MMM is the most beautiful history lesson, a lesson that should learn each. And let you learn it better by watching this video and putting like to it rather than you will stumble upon another Mavrodi with another startup that will promise you. Mountains of mount 
money and crazy interest and that's all for today please subscribe thank you all for watching this video and if you like it you had a desire to support and financially then all links will be in the descriptions bye everyone